Hello, hello, I'm Dakota May, and welcome back to Paper Hats. It is a gorgeous day in Sylvandale today, and I have an extremely long list of stuff that I have left unfinished in previous episodes, and I always say, well, I'll get to it later, I'll get to it later, and, um, yeah. Today's the day. We're going to get to some of that stuff later. And the first thing we're going to get to uh, later, which is now, is uh, this road that is very much <laughs> in need of help because it looks so horrible. So last episode, when I built this road, I said, you know, I really want to try it with some mud bricks, but I didn't have any. Um, yeah. In between episodes, I went out to a mangrove swamp and I gathered a whole bunch of mud so that we can actually try a decent block palette instead of these horrid looking path blocks, which I mean, path blocks aren't the worst thing in the world, but sometimes they just aren't aren't doing the trick and that would definitely be right here right now they were really not working on this path but if i have any sense of uh uh knowing what things are going to look like when i'm done I'm thinking this is going to look a lot better oh You, oh, I like the noise it makes, too, when you walk on it. Oh, that's actually quite nice. Okay, one thing, though, I did leave some gaps and, and holes in it because I would actually like to try some granite, and I'm <laughs> just realizing I forgot to pick some up, so we can uh, fly over here to the storage room real quick and, and grab a stack of granite. Just because, like, I was thinking, you know, what what is the third block that would look good with these other two and i i don't know i just i i kind of think granite is gonna look decent so let's just ah uh, it doesn't take very long to fly because everything is pretty compact here so okay let's plop this in here real quick and give that a bit of a look oh yes i i really like that block palette okay okay yeah i could see this working out I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to extend this through the rest of the dirt path and work on this road and hopefully, um, hopefully we've got a winner of an idea here. It <laughs> wouldn't take much to look better than it did before. I really like that. I, I'm not going to lie. I really like that path. Um, like the block combination and the the trim on the edges I think it works so well I did um, I replaced not just the the path blocks but also the basalt on the side because that was just way too harsh and I feel like this uh, this other it I, it's softer I, I think it just works better but while I was working on that I did have an idea actually because one of the other things that we left undone in here was this whole area around the tree in the very center of the temple this is a very like important focal point type area so it's really important to have this all like decorated all nice and have it look really pretty but to be honest, I, I kind of just, I spent all of my effort designing the tree and then my brain was tired. So yeah, that, <laughs> that happened. Um, but yeah, I would very much like to bring that path block palette down here into this area. Cause I was thinking we could have little paths coming off of each of the four quadrants here. And then we could like build a path circle going around the tree. And we can like decorate it all pretty with some flower beds and make it look really, really nice and lush and vibrant down here. Or at least that's, that's the idea I have inside my head. There we go. Yes, I think that this block palette works really well in here as well. This is just, it's a really versatile block palette. I quite like it for paths. Like, I, I think it's great. But I did want to try out, um... Just doing a little bit of trimming here on the edge of the stairway down. Uh, do I want blocks there or do I actually want it, the staircase to just shut out a little bit? I'm actually not sure. Huh. 
Well, I think I'll go around and put these, um, put these blocks down just so they can start oxidizing. And then if I change my mind and decide that I don't like it, it's easy enough to remove them. It, it won't be that big of a deal. But yeah, like it, I feel like it looks, it looks good both ways. Um, I'm honestly not, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to keep thinking about that. But yeah, so you can kind of start to get a little bit of a feel for what I was talking about with like a, a central circle around the tree with a little bit of a garden in it and then some raised flower beds over in these corners is, is kind of what I have planned. So like I, I'll, I'll plop some, some grass down here um, and yeah, make it, make it raised. <laughs> And now it's really starting to take shape and come together and you can definitely see what I'm going for. We've got uh, the the trim here along the, the central garden to keep that all contained away from the paths. We got our raised beds in place and some little hedges to separate everything apart. And what I've got planned for these raised beds is actually the flower gradient because all four of these beds are completely in meadow. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity to explore the meadow gradient. And as we discovered very early on in the season, the meadow flower gradient is 3D. So it's technically possible that we could have some very different flowers in each of the different like levels because there's there's like there's three levels yeah so that's technically possible so i'm very curious actually to see how this is going to turn out i have no idea what to expect i've i've not done a project like this before so <laughs> this could be very interesting or very boring and i guess we're gonna find out together <laughs> so let's hop into a time lapse and find out what this meta gradient looks like So, I don't know what I was expecting exactly, but somehow this wasn't it. <laughs> I, I don't know, I, it definitely caught me off guard, I think, how many cornflowers and alliums there were, which it shouldn't have, because I picked this meadow because it had a lot of cornflowers and alliums, and I liked that. Anyway, <laughs> I did notice uh, some parts are kind of dark, and so I might need to sneak some lighting in, so like, maybe here? ish would be a good spot for some more lighting and like there are other places just kind of scattered around um everything is spawn proofed it's just there's a possibility that it might not show up super well on camera i don't know i'll i'll have to We'll find, we'll find out, I guess. I hope it shows up all right on camera. But this section here was the one that was a little bit different and it surprised me, especially these two little cornflowers that popped up over here in the corner. I thought that was really funny. And then I also thought it was pretty cool that even though most of it is, yes, cornflowers and alliums, there is that one section that is not cornflowers and alliums and it, it involves a... Uh, dandelions and I am horrible at landing in trees. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh well, um, 
I I I really wanted a, an above view. Maybe <laughs> maybe the balcony is a bigger target. But yeah, like you can you, it, the 3D obviously doesn't because we're not doing a, like a straight up stack. They're they're you know they're terraced, but you can you can kind of see how it both connects and doesn't connect vertically. And that was my my experience when testing. Um, it was it was sometimes it it would sync up vertically and other times it wouldn't and it was kind of random honestly uh, whether or not it would match up or or not match up and so yeah I'm I'm not sure that this is necessarily the best way to show off the 3D gradient but it's the first attempt. There we go. I think that's going to finish off this central area here. I put a whole bunch of leafy planty bits along the bottom of the tree just to make it feel a lot more connected to the environment. I also put a little bit of thought into the story of this area and thinking, you know, this is a temple, right? This is, this is like people are supposed to pilgrimage here in order to see the Mother Azalea tree and to, um, have some sort of like you know peaceful serene type experience and so i thought how can i how can i express that in the build and so what i ended up doing was i put some potted plants along the edging there and the idea is that pilgrims you know left that as a gift to the tree and then you can also see they've put some candles along the edge and lit those candles as well and the candles are not at all hostile to the tree they are merely a celebratory token thing <laughs> and I also went ahead and started working on the courtyard out here because you know I just thought this is an azalea temple and we yes we have some azalea trees but we have this whole huge courtyard and it really needs more azaleas you know they're like they're just there aren't enough azaleas so i went ahead and i planted a whole bunch of azaleas here in the courtyard in order to make something beautiful and temple-y and <laughs> i am just kidding i i i i'm i'm that was a bad joke i'm sorry i lied to you that wasn't very funny and it wasn't very nice but <laughs> actually what i'm doing is i'm farming leaves i need a ton of leaves and so this is my leaf farm <laughs> And now that all of those azalea trees have been cleaned up, <laughs> I did collect quite a lot of leaves. It wasn't exactly four shulkers, but it was pretty close actually. And we are definitely going to be needing these leaves. Um, I'm I probably actually am going to need more leaves than this, but this is enough to get started. It'll keep us going for a little while. Hello kitties. It has been a while since I've checked in. Um, what do you think of the temple so far? Oh, really? Well, um, you're right. It is difficult to see it from down here. So why don't we set you guys free to roam a little bit? And here, come on, come on up here. I'll give you guys the grand tour of what we've done so far. We've been working on the entrance and the central area just in order to make things look all leafy and fancy and, and, um, what, what do you mean it's not enough? What? Well, that was rude. You didn't have to say it that way. Ugh. These cats, I, they, they're just so rude. You didn't even look down here to see I spent a really long time making a beautiful garden. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're just so rude all the time, you guys. I just, I don't know what to do with these cats. Yes, you're right. I didn't work on the dome. It's still not finished yet. But you know what? Sometimes, sometimes we have other... No, I'm talking. Stop talking over me. Sometimes we have better things to do than work on a dome. Sometimes we have to farm leaves. Oh my goodness. <laughs> these cats, I swear. 
they just drive me nuts. Drive me nuts! But, I mean, at the very least, we have made some sales. We've had some pilgrims come to the temple and get some frog poop, which is... <laughs> is amazing um yeah so i'm i'm gonna take my money and see flaunt it you gotta flaunt it see we're making money this is a rich temple this is a rich temple and now that we've got all of those leaves taken care of it's all cleaned up and put back to the way that it it was previously <laughs> But now that we've taken care of that, I wanted to continue the theme of working on things that have been left undone. So yeah, this uh, next bit is to just put leaves over this, although maybe not that spot right there. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I wanted to put some leaves here and there covering these little um, roof lines. Not like, not too many of them, but enough that it feels a little bit overgrown like I don't want it to feel like abandoned like super overgrown but just enough and and then we can like knock out the the wood occasionally and have the leaves drooping down I think that's gonna look really nice just scattered here and there around the entire edge of the courtyard and then the other thing that I wanted to do was to just take care of uh, prettifying these things a little bit because the, these towers, like, they're supposed to be quite plain. Like, the, 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 um, the resource image that I used for the temple design that I, like, modeled this after, they, they were very plain in the original design. And, um, so I don't think that's an issue, but I do think, I, I just feel like they need just a little something. So I thought, what if we hang some potted plants off of these and I am just now realizing I, uh, I forgot to get pots. <laughs> that might, might be a tiny bit of an issue to not have any pots if I'm <laughs> gonna hang potted plants. Oh well, that's easy enough to fix. So there we pot there, pot there, and just grab an azalea for the seaming, obviously. There we go, just something like that. I don't, again, I want to leave the, the towers quite plain, but I'm hoping that just putting a couple of hanging plants on them will just add that little extra something. There we go. I quite like that. I think it looks a little bit plain right now, to be honest, but I think that's mostly just because the rest of the courtyard isn't done. I didn't want to go too overboard with the leaves, primarily because the the design that we have for the courtyard that we're not going to get to today, that's going to be a massive project for another episode but the design that I have in mind for that is going to have a lot of leaves so I don't want to overdo it however we do need some more leaves because why not so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and at these little entrances we can just do these little loop de swirls of leaves in order to um just kind of accentuate these walkways a little bit and to make it look a little bit more inviting just in terms of like the environment to actually use these doorways. And several loop de swirls later, <laughs> that is going to finish off the courtyard for now. We've, we've, I think we've done like the wall and the trimming and I think we've got that stuff, well, like I said, for now. It's finished for now. <laughs> and that right there is the last thing that I want to work on. The last project that I have been neglecting and abandoning. <laughs> so there's these two front corners of the temple are floating in midair and we need to cover that up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend the dirt out just a little ways and uh, no nothing huge. Like I basically I just want enough room to just be able to walk around on the outside part of the wall. And then I'm going to copy the basalt base that the temple is built on. And I'm just going to uh, basically do the exact same thing out here. And um, yeah, hopefully that's going to end up working out really nicely. 
that is exactly what I was hoping for. I feel like it just, it connects it to the landscape and it finishes off those corners so nicely. And it, it's such, I don't know, sometimes the best uh, ways to handle these situations are the simplest, you know, to just have a little bit of a wall coming out of the natural cliff to, to close that off. So yeah, I'm really happy with the way that this worked. I, I feel like today's projects have all gone very smoothly. But that is going to have to be it for me today, you guys. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like, commenting, subscribing, all of that fun youtube stuff. Thanks again for watching, guys, and ta-ta for now!